When functions and types are placed into tabs in the links designer, they represent a control sequence and generally execute from top to bottom in the order in which they appear. Control flow statements break up the flow of execution by employing decision making, looping and exception handling, thereby enabling us to conditionally execute particular blocks of logic. Indenting conditional execution paths is a common pattern in programming and all links control flow functions implement this pattern. When we drag a try catch function into a function tab, we are presented with two execution paths, the try and the catch. The for each and do while functions both contain a loop path that can execute multiple times. Plugin functions that handle list data like the execute SQL or file list function can also expose their own loop paths. When we drag an if-else function from the links plugin into a tab in the links designer, we can define conditions for it in the properties panel. Here we can give each condition a name and define the condition value either by selecting a variable from our function or by creating an expression. When we save the conditions editor, our conditions are shown as separate execution paths under the if-else function. Inside the path, we can define logic we want to execute when the condition is true. Execution paths have their own scope. This means that while data generated outside of the path is available inside the path, data generated inside the path cannot be accessed outside of it. For example, string2 does not have access to string1 and we can't select it in the value property of string2. But when we move string1 outside of the if-else, now string2 has access to string1. To set string1, we can use a set value from the links plugin. The target will be the string1, and the value will be the value we want to set string1 to. When we assign a list to a for each function, and enable logging, we can see the values generated inside the loop scope in the debug output panel when we debug it.